it's not so much knowing God. It's knowing God in you. Knowing God outside ourselves makes it feel outside. And then the measure of possibilities start being impossibilities and they knock on the door of self. In this episode, you're going to see and I'll share a rare life application from an entrepreneurial position with a little heavenly persuasion. I discuss a very hands-on day in the spirit, the day before Thanksgiving. And Lord, I'm supposed to be baking pies and getting ready for company. What was meant as a catastrophe resolved through the courts of heaven, a live activation ended in solving the problems sent to disrupt and hurt so many. You will learn, be encouraged at how the Lord continues to teach us, speak to us, and He loves on us. It's not so much knowing God, it's knowing God in you. I'll see you on the inside. Hello from the Pacific Northwest. This is Kristen from KristenWombach.com, and you're listening to Intentional Now Podcast. Answer me this. How does a Baptist farm girl from Oregon stumble upon the mystical nature of Christ, the love of God? If you're like me, Jesus has redefined what you used to say yes to. Join me and my guest on a mystical journey. But before we talk about the spiritual woo-woo, you need to know I am totally sold out to Jesus. It's amazing what the love of God reveals. It's not so much knowing God. It's knowing God in you. Knowing God outside of ourselves makes it feeling outside. And the measure of impossibilities start knocking on the door of self. Let's pray together. Father God, I love you. We love you. Holy Spirit, we ask for your help today. It's a special day. We ask for your help to hear that you would open our hearts wide and that you would fill our mouths and our hearts and our ears with good things. Amen. I had a vision in a vision in an encounter this week. I encountered a dream and I had a vision for the dream. And then I outworked what was going to happen from the dream with the strategy of the vision. (laughs) Don't ask me how all of this works. (laughs) No, I just don't know. How do you have a vision when you're in a spiritual encounter, which is all in the spirit? So let's just keep it simple. How is that any different than me sitting here at my desk writing my thoughts out? A vision is in your spirit. The more you exercise life in the spirit and strengthen the muscles there, the more you encounter symbiotic experiences of acting as one in the oneness with him. I think I'm going to say that again so I can hear it. How is that any different than me sitting here at my desk writing this thought out? A vision is in your spirit. The more you exercise life in the spirit and strengthen the muscles there, the more you encounter symbiotic experiences, acting as one in the oneness with him. 
a vision is just God's story. Like watching a movie on an airplane monitor. It it pops down or it's little and there it is for you to focus on. God is fully at home in you. Just like he is fully at home with himself being Christ in human form. There is no difference. No difference. In Colossians 2.11, let, let's, let's share this. Just as a person's spirit knows their own thoughts beyond the public eye, even so the Spirit of God is our faith decoder to access the thoughts of God. In modern technology, it would be impossible to access information from a source that is not compatible with your device, with your phone, with your iPad, or your laptop. Without a decoder, you just couldn't have access, correct? Well, the spirit proceeding from God unveils the gifts of of his generosity. And that's what we're doing today. We are unveiling the gifts of his generosity. He has graced us with understanding so that we may know what he has always had in mind for us. This is so, so much unlike the secular spirit of wisdom in the world where everything has a price tag. Christ is unveiling the mystery of God's wisdom. Today, in this episode, God is unveiling the mystery of God's wisdom. Now, we know how God redeemed our righteousness and our wholeness in Christ. In God's economy, (laughs) talking very personal today, Christ represents us what mankind could never achieve through personal discipline or willpower as taught in every religion. Mm -hmm. God's faith accomplished in Christ. That was God's faith. It's not our faith. It's God's faith accomplished in Christ. Of his design are we in Christ. That's his doing. We are associated in oneness with him. Our wisdom is sourced in this union. And we're going to talk about that wisdom sourced in the union of oneness. In Colossians 1.17, I love it. He is the initiator of all things. Therefore, everything finds its relevance and its true pattern only in him. Mm -hmm. Remember, I had a vision and a vision in an encounter. He's the initiator of all things. So the ecclesia, the church, the body of Christ, we're going to talk about that today, is the visible expression of, of which Jesus is the head. He's the principal. He's the rank of authority who leads the triumph procession of our new birth out of the region of the dead. His preeminent rank is beyond threat. There he sits at the right hand of the Father. It is beyond threat. And he is leading us in a resurrection parade. Amen. God is fully at home in him. Jesus exhibits God's happy delight to be human. (laughs) That's spacious and roomy and everything of God finds its proper place in him. No crowding. Nope. He initiated the reconciliation of all things to himself through the blood of the cross God restored the original harmony. His reign of peace now exists in every visible thing upon the earth, as well as those invisible things which are in the heavenly realm. (laughs) God is fully at home in us. 
because Jesus exhibits God's happy place to be human in you and in me. Happy place. (laughs) Okay, my story and vision and a life application testimony to boot. It's good stuff. Hot off the presses. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm going to decode it from the language that the Spirit of God used to speak to me. Mm -hmm. I'm uncoding it. (laughs) So we talked about that last week. Holy Spirit uses the library of yours and mine, our own experiences, to speak individually to you and to I, to both of us. He speaks that way so that he makes it personal. And your library is probably very different from my library, right? But before I begin, let me put a call to action for you. I love a call to action. What do I mean? (laughs) Everything that I share with you in the spirit, the life application becomes a workshop for each of us, for you and I. It's a workshop to increase, to learn, to expand. A workshop of Jesus Christ who leads the triumphant procession of a new birth out of the region of the dead. Death is dead. But you and I were following him out to know him personally. A testimony of encounters acting just like Jesus when he led captivity captive, leading things that we captured by death itself. And that is for another day. Those things and those people, they're not dead. Nothing is dead in him. That is the living love of God. (laughs) And we will talk about that on another day. (laughs) This episode has plenty of power packed in it. We are seated in heavenly places with him, but we must engage the heavenly places through relationship to experience and activate the authority of Jesus Christ in us, the hope of glory. That way it becomes a workshop for you and I to take part. We include ourselves, you and I, yes. We include ourselves. We make a choice. We activate the testimony and make it personal between you and him. Got it? A workshop. Are you feeling overwhelmed by the chaos of your daily life? Do you find yourself struggling to keep up with your responsibilities both at work and at home? If so, I have a solution for you. As an Evernote expert, I have developed a series of templates and planners that will help you tame your work and organize your life. Using pretty Evernote templates with themes for workflow, home, finances, self-care, podcast, wedding, baby, and event, it's the perfect way to keep all aspects of your life in one place. Whether you need to keep track of your meetings, appointments, or even just your grocery list, my templates have got you covered. With just a few clicks, you can have a customized planner that suits your individual needs. And here's the best part. I guarantee that one well-used daily planner can change your life. I'm living proof. When you have a clear plan for your day, you'll be amazed at how much more you can accomplish. You'll feel less stressed and more in control of your life. So why wait? Try pretty Evernote templates and planners today and start taking control of your life. Let's get you started today. It's just a click away in your show notes. Okay. We'll breathe in and breathe out. (laughs) Did I tell you this is the day before Thanksgiving? 
nope, but we were going to get to that. I have pies to make here. <laughs> and the subject matter has changed, I can't tell you how many times, because he had some life application to bring to the forefront. All right? This encounter is for the body. It's it's for you and I. I've learned from it. Um, writing this out, thinking about the thoughts, I continue to learn, but it's for you and I. Here we go. Yay. <laughs> I encountered a half-open window on the timeline. The window frame was flaming, and I could see the body of Christ in him before the foundation of the world. So let me see if I can do a better job of explaining that. I did draw a picture of it. I will drop that in the show notes. So imagine you seeing, looking at the timeline from the cosmos, and you see a flaming window window in the center then you see the before, the before, or the was, was. And there we are sitting in him in creation's council. And you can also see the timeline pass um, through the window or where the window sits on it. And you can see the future. I hope that's a better picture for you. In John 17, 24, it says, but let's, let's, let's put this in perspective here of what Jesus is saying here. Jesus has experienced the cross. He's experienced death, got the keys to hell and Hades. He took on our shame, right? He's been raised from the dead and he's appeared to the disciples several times before his ascension. Get it? Before his ascension. He is speaking to you and I, to us, and we call it prayer. And this is what he's saying. Father, I desire that what you've given me in them may cause them to be where I am. Where I am. That's present day. It does not include dying physically. Present day, so that they may see what I see and gaze attentively upon the splendor of my glory, which you have given me in them, in you and I. Because you loved me before the fall of the world, you loved them before the fall of the world. Thus, the world will be persuaded that your love for them was never compromised because of the fall. You continue to love them the same. The entire fall was a falling away in our minds from our true identity and image and likeness as bearers of Elohim. Just like Eve, We all have been deceived to believe a lie about ourselves, which is the fruit of the I am not tree. Well, we're going to deal with some of that fruit today in a very unique way. So in Isaiah 53, Father of righteousness, while the world has not known you, I have known you, and these here, you and me, have come to know that you sent me. You and me, we have come to know our identity in him. And Jesus continues, and I have made the essence of your being known to them so that they may know you by name. And I will also give them understanding to know that the same love wherewith you have loved me is in them even as I am in them. The same, the same, 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 same in us. The same in you and me. The same. Amen? So I encountered this half-opened flaming window 
on the timeline. My spirit discerned its meaning as the gospel present day and the half opened meaning that there's more revelation of the gospel of Jesus Christ than is presently understood in the framework, the window of the knowledge through scripture. I could see us, the body of Christ in him, I could see us before the foundation of the world. I could see us sitting with him, in him, as him. So in him, we were seated in creation's council. That's before heaven and earth, before light and everything written in Genesis, before. That's where we were. And it's our privilege to remember being in him and knowing our identity in him. And then I could also see the timeline towards the future, my first vision. Then I had an an encounter that represented the body of Christ, my peers, you and I. This person was in trouble, a problem. And the way we had had communion with him, our bread of life, on a daily basis, it was broken. Our communication was broken. And this is the word picture that Holy Spirit used to make it a life application for me. I saw my peer concerned about a problem. And she was preparing her morning meal, communion, and the toaster was broken. She was unable to get her fresh bread for the day, get it? The toaster was broken. And the way that she had always experienced Jesus, the bread of life, the way she'd always done it, it was broken. Well, she didn't know how to fix this. She didn't know how to fix it so that she could overcome her problem or concern. Next encounter. She, my peer, us as the body of Christ, at the last minute invited me to preach on Sunday. Well, I I was a bit caught off guard. But on my way, the vision from above, that was my answer. Preach or share, just like we're doing now through the platform of this podcast, right? Share that God can see that the toaster is broken right? God can see that. Yes, it's broken. The half open flaming window on the timeline, only half the gospel, that's just not going to solve our problem. And I needed to share with them. I could see us, the body of Christ, in him before the foundations of the world. Back to our scripture. And what Jesus shared with us in John 17. Before ascending, he wanted to make absolutely sure that we followed him in this way. From a position of life. Father, I desire that what you have given me in them may cause them to be where I am, present day, so that they may see what I see and gaze upon the splendor of my glory which you've given me in them, because you loved me before the fall of the world, and you love them before the fall of the world. Thus, the world will be persuaded that you love them and your love for them never compromised because of the fall. You continue to love them the same. Love, his love for us, has never nor ever will be compromised. And that's seeing in the future with the window fully opened. Death hell and Hades cannot hold the falling mindset that we've attached to the gospel. We have been taught that our power of choice can separate us from the love of God. And that is not true. Nope. 
not true. Back to my encounter. So I preached this message to a small crowd. And this small crowd and I, we went to the window representing the present and we asked for forgiveness for compromising the love of God. And we proceeded together to open the window fully to lift it up to our future. And this revealed revelation or a highlighter of revelation because it's always been true. So then I was asked to say it again, to preach it again, because now the window was fully opened. Now here is the testimony of the window being fully opened for us, for you and I as the body of Christ. This is who we are in him. This is who he is in us, in you and me. And what we need to continue to learn and encounter and practice and believe as we walk in our future selves, fully reminded of being in him before, before, before. (laughs) Yesterday, (laughs) this gets good, (laughs) yesterday, I was sewing up all the last minute bells and whistles for my Black Friday sale. I've shared with you before that I have several online stores. I'm an entrepreneur. (sighs) Okay. I was sewing up all those last minute bells and whistles for my Black Friday sale, which was to begin tomorrow. Hours and hours of work and organization to release my Black Friday offer, which is I was or I am, it it represents present day. Selling complete, I was selling, I am, (laughs) okay, I'll get it right. I was or I am, present day, selling complete access for entire year to all my Evernote planners and templates for half price. It's a good deal. I'm sharing it with you. That is $24.99. It's a radical offer that the Lord had placed on my heart. My hours and hours of work to prepare the offer so that it will serve the buyer's needs for an entire year. You, You got it all those social media, the graphics and putting it together, the reels, the posts, the links, the, uh, you understand. Like our window being opened to reveal the goodness of God for our future. I do see the resemblances that is called our oneness in him. He's speaking to both you and he's speaking to both me. So yesterday afternoon, I was writing my very last email to send it out to my entire contact list, sharing my offer. I had already shared the offer earlier with my current customer list, rightly so. We have begun to build relationship because relationship gives you inside privileges. Amen? I rewrote and tweaked and changed some of the graphics of the email. And I was nudged, double check the link that goes to my offer on my store page of the website. Just, Just double check the link that is included in the email. So when I opened the link from that drafted email, It took forever and ever to process. Yeah, the wheel just kept turning and turning and turning and it wouldn't download, it wouldn't open. And then when it finally opened, the format of my website was compromised. It was tweaked. It didn't even look like my website. Rats, a big rats. What in the world is happening? So I did the proverbial, change your browser, clear your cookies. We all know the drill. And I hit the link again, no change. My website 
was broken the day before my biggest increase of the year. <laughs> OMG. Hundreds of links to advertisements that I had done in preparation were toast. Get it? The broken toaster? Mm-hmm. They were toast. So I opened a chat with technical support. Yada, 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 yada. Oh, we just all love to do that. That only proceeded to tell me that I had to relist each and every one of the store items because the code had been crossed. Thus, all the links were going to be gone, flushed away. Oh, yep. I could have started crying, but instead I said, well, let's get the bad news out of the way and move on. <laughs> let's go. Come on. And this is where it gets good. <laughs> so I felt prompted to make a phone call to technical support. I waited for about 10 minutes in the queue. It's about four o'clock in the day. The day before my sale is supposed to start at 6 a.m. And 6 a.m. is starting across the ocean, right? So I have this evening, I have a meeting before 6 and a friend coming over for dinner and it's 4 o'clock. Uh-huh. Hmm. <laughs> So I came up in the queue and I said hello to the support person. Firmly and politely, I told her of the importance of this call. And if she didn't feel qualified to help me, please forward me to her supervisor. I was firm and focused and she handled it marvelously. <laughs> in a matter of five minutes, she checked my site saw a problem existed, and then called through to the engineering department of this large hosting company. They were scheduled to close at 6. It's just a little bit after 4. She came back on the line apologizing profusely and said that the virus or bug was in their system. Oh, she was so sorry they didn't know when the engineers would be able to uproot it. Actually, I was relieved. Oh, good, it's somebody else's problem. But my problem's not solved. Oh, dear. But it wasn't my direct problem. So she said and that they would email me when they discovered and fixed the issue, which it could be days. She put no early timing on it. I thanked her for at least providing the truth. Mm -hmm. The window, get it? The truth. <sighs> I was, excuse my hard language, oh, I was pissed off. I don't know about you, but in this holiday marketing season, I have sure detoured a lot of scams, a lot of phone calls and oh, emails. Jeez, I was pissed to think somebody had hacked and created a virus that would steal resources and mess up people's livelihoods. Oh, Livelihoods that they'd counted on for this season. Oh, my gosh. It was huge, and I felt it. And now I perceived it differently. I was looking at it differently. Oh, my gosh. Two very large hosting companies that supported and transferred hundreds of thousands of dollars for so many companies and individuals and entrepreneurs just like me. It was broken down. Oh. <laughs> and this is what the nitty gritty in the spirit looks like. I finally got, I go, God, I got this. I've got this. I see what's going on here. And yep, another little infomercial. I took notes in my beloved Evernote planner. Mm -hmm. And here they are. 
If this is new to you, you can take notes on the application on a heavenly courtroom proceeding. That's what we're doing. Courtroom proceedings. <laughs> oh, crap. My store was down. This company has a virus. Poo! Right before Black Friday. Lord, this has to do with the pockets of so many people. Oh. And I heard him say, you go, girl. Sick em. <laughs> So I brought a mandate before the Lord. It's like I wrote it on the paper in the spirit and I wrote, bug. And I saw myself. I sat down on the mountain of com commerce. Yes. I put that paper on the father's bench and said, bug. Let's get rid of it, God. <laughs> I saw myself sitting on the mountain of commerce. And yeah, I have a picture that I've drawn to help me visualize that. It's in the show notes. Help you. And I heard the word fear. Oh, I could relate with that. Fear. Oh my gosh. Then I stepped over to the internet and I pulled up an octopus thing. Just this octopus thing on the internet. This is in the spirit. And I threw it on before the father at the bench. I said, Father, here is the ugly enemy here. What would you like me to do? I, ju I just pulled it up like pulling an octopus and its tentacles. So what would you like me to do, father? And he said, heal the wounds. The wounds where I just ripped the tentacles of fear out. So I released the love of God. I released them to where the tentacles had been ripped. That could be my own life, my own resources, and all the people that were involved. I released the love of God to supernaturally heal and fill, be mended. And Father, the ocean of the internet is being, it was being highlighted to me. It was like the whole ocean represented the internet. So then I saw myself going into the ocean and going deeper, deeper, deeper into the ocean floor. And then I lifted up a door that was covered with, the, what is it called, silt? It's not suit, soot. It's the silt of the ocean floor. And I opened up this, like a trap door or something. I opened up this, this trap door and I started walking down a set of stairs. And then all of a sudden I could see I was somewhere as I laugh at myself and say, Lord, we're not in Kansas anymore. So my spiritual eyes were actually perceiving the who, what, and the where, right? And I saw five game stations of hackers. I could see four guys sitting in like these cubicles with computers and, and monitors. But my spirit kept saying, nope, there's five, there's five, there's five. But I only see four, God. I said, I said no, there's five. And then it hit me. Four of them work for him. The fifth one. That's the owner. That's the one who's instigated it all. So I saw myself go to each one of the workstations and I picked up the paper and the pencils. I unplugged the computers and I commanded each one of who appeared as young people to line up in the middle of the room. And I told them, you stand there, you don't move and you can't say a thing. And I go to each station and I said, Lord, where is the one responsible for this? I'm just waiting and waiting. And then in the spirit, I am taken through this hallway and through a door. And I'm taken into what looks like a garage in somewhere suburbia. A very nice garage. And he must... Uh, this guy was sitting in this garage. He must have had 20 some odd screens on the wall. Oh, and I, 
could just see him. And I went, oh, my gosh. And I said to the Lord, God, if this were me, I'd spank him so hard. (laughs) It's kind of like the mom in me is kind of like, are you kidding? Oh, my gosh. So I caught myself for a minute and said, Father, how shall I approach? I want him to know that I'm there. And this is what I sense to do. He reminded me of a similar encounter where I dealt with some witches that had um, polluted the water in Slovakia. And what I did in that encounter, which has a testimony with it as well, is fabulous. I asked for forgiveness in front of them on behalf of them. So that was my mandate. So I told the person that was there, and he said, you sit in the chair and you don't move. And you are to watch me. (laughs) As a mother, (laughs) I'm disappointed in you. God has given you a brilliant mind. I'm doing this in front of him. And that mind is to be used for good, to help people. Father God, I forgive this brilliant young man for using his great gift for harm and greed. I ask for forgiveness. I forgive him. I forgive him for the causing pain to people, financial pain, myself and everyone that is involved. And I looked him straight in the eye and said, I forgive you. I'm sorry. I love you. Father, I release this young man. I forgive this young man who has also been stripped of himself before this. This just didn't happen today. It's happened to him. I stepped in and I asked for forgiveness on his behalf and I forgave the male line in his family, his father and his father's father. I put my hand on his shoulder I looked him in the eye. I forgive you like you were my own son. And there it was. I was crying. He was crying. Oh my gosh, it was a moment. It was a moment. And then we wrapped up the mandate. I left him in Holy Spirit's arms. And I came back to the Father and said, Father, I ask for a decree of cancellation and cleanup. I cut, I cut off and I released them all from being stuck to their chairs or standing there unable to talk. I said, now, young man. I commit your spirit to the Lord. I commit your brilliant mind to the Lord. Go and sin no more. Help your fellow man. Help your generation. Love your family. Find a mentor. And Father God, I ask for a divorce decree from this. I had it recorded by Edward the Scribe, and I released it to Raphael. One of the, he's in charge of the angels that just makes it real quick. <laughs> and get this. Oh, this is the good stuff. <laughs> I got an email within two hours. And this large hosting company informed me it was fixed. Fixed, fixed, fixed. Hallelujah. Fixed. Amen. Fixed. (laughs) Yay. And I had five sales before 8 a.m. this morning. Yes, God. (laughs) That is what I'm talking about here. (laughs) 
opening the window of the gospel of Jesus Christ alive in us. The toaster of communion is not only fixed, but upgraded to take us into our future, remembering and being shown to remember ourselves in him, before in him, before, before, in the was, was, in his love, all of us in his love. And Jesus is still saying, we hear you. The world will be persuaded that your love for them was never compromised because of the fall. You continue and always will and always have to love each and every one of us the same. The same, the same. Oh, my gosh. And did I tell you I have three pies to go make? <laughs> oh, I don't know about you, but this occurs often to where the Lord just brings a thought, a message, an encounter, an unction of the heart. And it's going to like, Lord, I'm really busy. But he just says, no, let's, let's bring this to the head, to the understanding. And now I've shared it with you. And yes, I got to go put together the show notes. But the whole point of it is him in us, Jesus in us has been given us the wisdom and the understanding and the access to fix all the broken toasters, (laughs) to fix problems. Sometimes we wonder, why do I have so many problems? Maybe it's because I'm the one with the ability to fix them in you, right? Well, think about it differently now. (laughs) I bless you. If you're listening to this on Thanksgiving weekend, I bless you. (laughs) Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Give somebody a great big hug. Look them in the eye and say, I love you. I love you. God has given us so much. And, And I just have a, what I always say to my dear friends, I said, you know, we could look at this with a little bit of homework and we could actually ask the Lord, um, would you take me to that heavenly place and so I can see that window of the gospel? I want to see if mine is fully opened. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go make two pumpkin pies and a mincemeat. I bless you. I bless you. Thanks for spending this time with me. I love you, and I will see you and talk with you again next week. You know where to find me. Bye now.